It's the Queen's takeover here for changing the game. All female ass kickers giving lumps to you lames. Carolina boss lady giving orders cause she run it like a freaking assassin. You won't even see it coming. Got the Texas sports queen repping Houston for days. She's the voice of freaking reason. Keep you stupid at bay. And lastly, it's the Jester Delaware is a home. Talking crap to Jolie, your brains might get blown. And you know Kat and Kayla both a rep in the South. So you ever disrespect, you might get smacked in the mouth. Three women, one vision, podcast with a mission. Leaving haters so pissed, they be stumbling and tripping. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want that smoke. All female trio will make you lose that hope. It's time, so turn it up, let's get ready to go. It's the Queen's Takeover, ladies, start that show. We're back! Did you miss us? Oh, ladies, I missed y'all. How was y'all's weeks? Eh. <laughs> I'm still in recovery mode. Yeah, like not one, not two, but three days of Swift. Woo! I love I, Taylor Swift, but I don't know how Jolie did it. <laughs> paycheck. Oh, well, that too, but still. <laughs> Oh, shit. Um, I mean, I feel bad for everybody up at Gillette Stadium right now that got poured on last night. I and saw she, that. And she looked like she was fucking freezing. And all right, before we go any further, let us get the elephant in the room out of the room. The security guard was fired on the spot during Bad Blood Night 2, Taylor Swift, Lincoln Financial Field, because he was harassing a child. Whoa! I know pe- everybody's been fucking asking me at work, and people have like, you know, what happened, what this. So, TikTok is a great thing where I got to see the incident in living color. Uh, the video has been taken down since then. I guess I don't know if who asked them to take it down, or maybe they just took it down because they're tired of the harassment. But right. the little, the, just a kid getting close to the fence, and the security guard had a bug up his ass. Maybe he didn't want to work three straight days. Well, guess what, sweetheart? That's what we have to do. Um, so apparently he was escorted out right then, there, and let go. So wow. he had a power trip. They weren't doing anything wrong. And um, so all the people's like, oh, hey, yeah, Taylor's lip syncing. Uh, those are called backup singers, you dumb fucks. Just saying. But other than that, fantastic show. Uh, Philly I think they tried to do it outside Nashville, but I don't think they came as close as to what it was outside Philly. Uh, Lincoln Financial Field, where we had over 20,000 people outside in the parking lot and in the streets. They closed down the entire length of the Link Street, Lemon Street, completely shut down for fans to stand out and sing and dance and party with her. Oh, wow. Okay, now, did you, did the merch truck get there like two or three days ahead of time as well? Yes, and every time I came into the stadium, the line was already wrapped around the building. And when we finally got upstairs to, like, my section, because doors opened at 4.30, as soon as they got in, they were in merch lines. Gotcha. And, yes, I bought a t-shirt. Yay! Because <laughs> you said you were going you to get yourself one for your birthday. Well, I wanted the tank top, but they didn't have the tank top in my size, and I didn't want to order it online because I don't want to deal with bullshit online. So I'm like, all right, it's just a couple more dollars. I'll get the t-shirt. But I went okay. with the black t-shirt, not the white t-shirt, because I hate white. Unless it was the tie-dye one, because that would be fine. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell. I'll go into this more offline and everything. But we got we have some gifts coming on uh, to us from a promotion. I'll tell you that more offline. I forgot to tell you about that earlier. Or tall. Yeah. No, but it's some. It's something cool. All right. So Memorial Day weekend coming up. Got some pay per views going on. Uh, one. Uh, let's see. We're not gonna go into NXT Battleground because there's still shit settling from that. But we got Night of Champions on Saturday. We got Double or Nothing on Sunday. Um, and chronologically, let's get Night of Champions out of the way because there's a couple of storylines with this that we haven't been able to address because it's been a couple weeks since the three of us have gotten together. So let's get the big one out of the way. We have the final set for the World Heavyweight Championship. AJ Styles from SmackDown, Seth freaking Rollins from Monday Night Raw. And I've seen so much back and forth online because of this. 
the, with the matchup and everything. Some people want AJ to win. Some people want Seth to win. Um, some are saying that WWE is afraid to put the title on Seth because he's taking more time off because he's taking time off to do some filming, which is bullshit. Fuck off. Um, so this is a this one could be anyone's game. So Kayla, what do you think about the matchup and who do you have winning? Um, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles um, are definitely two of my top favorites when it comes to WWE. Um, and when we got this match, I was, I think I text you all in the chat, like, oh my God, we're getting AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins, you know, yep, exciting, you know, couldn't, as much as I wanted Finn back in the picture, I know he wasn't going to beat Seth, which was, was okay. I'm okay with that. Um, but I'm happy either side on this one. But um, so I'm kind of torn between both. But as much as he kind of needs to be back in the title picture, I'm sorry, Seth. I don't have to go with a Mr. Phenomenal AJ Styles. Just get AJ built back up where, you know, it's because Seth's had a title kind of sort of recently. And I think it's time for AJ to get back up in that spotlight. And I guess if that's the case. OC, back to Raw you go. <laughs> that, would, that would be the case since the title will be exclusively to Monday Night Raw. All right, Jester. Um, either one can win the title, whether it is true that he is filming or he was already filming and he's been filming, you know, him, Seth winning or losing, I don't think hurts him. He's a lot like Becky now in the aspect that she doesn't need a title to be relevant. He doesn't need a title to be relevant. Uh, I do like the possibility of the OC and Judgment Day feuding again. Uh, as Kayla rolls her eyes and head, you need a faction. <laughs> you need. I'm sorry, but you need a faction to go against a faction, and it's the perfect faction to go against that faction. And in the fact, Monday, when cannot think her name to save my soul. I don't think it was Kathy. I don't think it was Stacy either. But one of the ladies was interviewing J.D. Madonna and the fact that Finn was watching him at the top out of the window. So that could be another sign that Jamie Madonna might be part of Judgment Day. I didn't see that part. I didn't. I, I saw the interview. I didn't see him. I, I didn't. didn't him. I didn't. I just happened. It's a real glimpse because you see him talking. And as he's walking, you see Finn walking towards the window like he was paying attention the whole time. Hmm. That's more speculation. Right, Joel, um, no, so I would actually be happy for AJ to get one more title running because Seth definitely has a couple more in him. He's not retiring anytime soon, but I see AJ retiring probably in the next two, three years because he has slowed down. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, with him and the OC, I, I just, the only thing that I don't like about that is that it would break up Mia Yim and Bianca Belair because M- Bianca kind of needs some backup, and she's the only one that could really back up Bianca on SmackDown unless uh, LWO starts working with Bianca, which, again, I would be happy for. I'm a faction girl. I'm enjoying the fact that we are back to factions in WWE. Um, Somebody got a message. Um, So, yeah, I'm very happy either way, whoever wins, because it's going to be a phenomenal... It's going to be a phenomenal match regardless. It's Seth freaking Rollins and AJ fucking Styles. You know, been watching these two wrestle. They've wrestled each other. Let's 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 go back another round and you know what? Um I think they're the perfect candidates to kick it off and you know, then Finn can beat AJ for the title. Yeah. I mean, cuz it's like I think we were all like in consensus before that Finn's going to take the title from whoever at SummerSlam probably anyway. But as far as my pick, um, I'm kind of going to go left field from the two of you. Yes, I, I think AJ deserves another run before he retires and everything. But um, Seth's already on Raw, and he's been like a workhor- workhorse over there. And I think that nobody deserves it more than him to kick off that run. So even if it's a short run, I don't give a shit. He deserves it for us to kick off the run. So that's my pick. Look, either way, the fans are going to win because there's going to be fans of AJ. There's going to be fans of Seth. Or there's going to be fans of people that are tired of seeing fucking Roman 
being a fucking goddamn piece of shit moron who has a contract that has him. He only wrestles 30 days out of the fucking year. Oh, we're gonna get to that asshole next. Oh, we're gonna get to that asshole next. I, 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 I'm, I, as much as respect that I have for the man, Joe, his character is a piece of shit, and he's doing his job. But if you're gonna be wrestling, or if you're gonna be a champion, fucking be there. That's why I said right now, if if Seth is doing this movie, and if I know anything about how long Marvel movies takes to shoot especially depending on how big his role is. And from what I've gathered, and do not mind me, my nerdiness is coming out. It's a a secret society that they have been hinting at for a long ass time. And it's a secret society of serpents, I believe is the title of the group that he's possibly a part of. And the chick next to him looks like a badass version of Beth Phoenix. I couldn't tell who that was in that picture. But look like a younger Beth Phoenix to me. So I'm like, okay, Becky's going to have an issue with Beth now just because of this person. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. E- like I said, for me, either or, I would, I don't care. Either will elevate this new title just like Dean Ambrose did. Or I mean, well, not, no, they took the uh, title to SmackDown. Never mind. That's my bad. Um, well, just like when Seth and Finn try to elevate the new title, and then Finn got hurt, and it just went away, and now it's being held hostage. Yeah, well, I mean, KO won it like a month later and did a pretty good run with it, and then they fucked him over, so. All right. Speaking of the asshole, that's the other big story I wanted to get into. <sighs> Night of Champions is supposed to be his thousandth day as champion. But what is he not doing? Defending the title. Instead, him and his enforcer are going after the tag titles. Ugh. I'm, I must have cringed a thousand fucking times when I even heard about the possibility of this match happening. But on a positive side, a small positive side, this will be... Sammy's first time wrestling in Saudi Arabia because the diplomatic matters have been solved between Syria and Saudi Arabia. So, but still, I don't want this fucking match. I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen. And if that happens, I might take a break from WWE myself, or at least SmackDown. No, not in regards to that. I think that Jimmy or Jay is finally going to snap. Oh, that I would be great. That I would be happy with. Because what I think is going to honestly happen, I'll go ahead and throw mine out there. Kevin and Sammy's going to retain the titles with the help of with the Usos. I'm thinking because you see how it's building up. He's basically it's just is it the fact they got to figure out that Roman don't want anything to do with them, mm-hmm. or another way to kind of switch things up give a little heads up what if solo decides he don't want to be part of roman reigns because what has roman been doing lately bossing solo around left and right and it's just a matter of time that he snaps exactly and who's he going to choose over the tribal chief probably his brothers or just go by himself or i don't know it's anything's game i just part of me just don't And normally when I say I get the vibe, I'll go for it. But I'm not getting the vibe that he's walking out as tag titles. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. (laughs) I'll be this will be the one time, you know, hopefully it don't work that way. But I think (laughs) I think Kevin and Sammy's gonna get the titles and it's gonna be with the help of the Usos. Or Jay. Or maybe just Jay by himself and Jimmy just says, Screw it, I'm going on the side. You know, but something has involved the Usos. That Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn is walking out still champions because he does not need all the gold. Because next thing you know, he'll be going after Austin Theory for the United States title. Nope, no, nope, that, no. that's Sheamus. The rumor, I, is, the rumor is that's going to be Sheamus. Well, he didn't get it Friday night because spoilers are already out for Friday night SmackDown. Well, and I want to, if those spoilers are true about what happened with the tribal douchebag uh he did a no-no when it comes to things so uh if you don't want to be spoiled 
plug your ears for two minutes. Okay, if everybody's ears are plugged in, uh, you don't take the titles that you're going for, you dumb fuck. You don't. You don't pick them up and parade them around. That's how everybody loses. Mm-hmm. So thank you for telling us that you are going to put over Sammy and Kevin Roman. That's the only time I'm going to acknowledge you when you do that. I I acknowledge you as a losing douchebag. (laughs) Okay. Back to our, back to our normally scheduled program. So um, I would like to say that I do think that we, we we've heard something thrown around when solo first came in and I've heard it a couple other times in tweets and everything like that, that solo doesn't answer to Paul doesn't answer to Roman. He answers to the elders. So I still think that's going to come into play. And there is rumors that Rikishi might pop back up. You never know. He's always Rikishi's always been wanting to like to do something with the bloodline. So I think it'd be very interesting. And in all honesty, I think, Without the brothers, Roman is nothing. And I think for the epic failure of Roman's reign to end, unfortunately, is going to last longer than a thousand days. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully, maybe it won't. Maybe we will get lucky at SummerSlam. But so I'm picking Kevin and Sammy to retain. That was a long winded explanation. But I had to get out when I saw those spoilers. Like, you stupid. I'm not going to be able to have a chance to talk about it next week. <laughs> it's be after the fact. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <sighs> but I do think that the Usos are somehow getting involved because Jay, is, Jay and Timmy are both getting that scalded dog look. And, yeah. Kayla, were you going to throw in one more thing? I did, but it kind of slipped my brain. So, oh. no. <laughs> I had it right there, but it just went. <laughs> no, as much as I got irritated about the match when it made, made official, I was like, going, okay, Sammy and Kevin have to retain either on their own or actually, like, either with in- Uso's interference or through a DQ. That's, I mean, that's really the only way because it's like you, you cannot have Roman with more gold. This is getting ridiculous. It's getting boring. And I swear, if somehow he does, they do walk out with tag titles, I'm taking a break from SmackDown. The dirt sheet or whatever, some dirt sheet I saw on Twitter, this is what it was going to say. It said, at this rate, Roman will still be the champion after WrestleMania 40. And I said, Lord help us. <laughs> no, it's you not are- going to happen. And the only oh. reason why I say is this is not going to happen is because you're going to have WrestleMania in a blue collar city. And if it is Cody versus Roman again, that crowd will be so fucking hype for Cody winning in a blue collar city. Yeah. So it, it would mean a hell of a lot more. So. Oh, shit. All right. So I'm going to throw in a match real quick that has not been made official yet, but it's on the verge. And I'm pr- it's probably going to be made official Monday night. Trish Jadis, Becky Lynch. Yes, it's a non-title match, even though it's supposed to be United Champions, Roman. But, Jolie, what you got? If it's made official, Becky gets her revenge. And I think that if that does happen, then we might get the return of Lita to help her out. It will help. be made official Monday, because Monday is their contract signing. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's, yeah. yeah that, that's right, that's right, Okay. Uh, again, I have no idea what happened these past, especially this last, oh, this past Monday. I was asleep all day. I okay. literally fell asleep, and mom and dad are screaming upstairs that it's dinner time, and I didn't yeah. hear them. I was yeah. out. Well, that's what you get when three straight days of Taylor Swift and and seventy two hours only getting eighteen hours of sleep, if that. Yeah, um, I mean, at least my foot's now not swollen anymore. There you go. Yeah, my. Y'all, I got brand new shoes, and my feet were swollen to the point where I couldn't put any pressure on it. It was bad. But anyway, uh, yeah. so Trish versus lead, uh, Trish versus, yeah, I want that. And then I feel that we could get a one more, one time, Lita versus Trish at SummerSlam. Ooh. Becky Lynch as a guest special referee. <laughs> I'd be okay, I would be okay with that. And the only reason why I say this is because, you know, 
I think, well, yes, the WrestleMania match was great. People bitched about it because they didn't think that Lita had all her moves, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. I got to see. I want, when when you have people retire or they're going to retire, like when we talked about Edge retiring, we were thinking, okay, Christian, Christian or Matt Hardy being his final match would be the best retirement match because Randy's out. Randy can't do it. So if this, if this is going to be Lita's last match ever, it has to be with Trish. 100%. For real. So I see Lita somehow getting involved, Becky getting the win, the fans being happy, getting to see the legendary Trish Stratus in Saudi Arabia. Look, look, as much as I hate the regime of that country, they're still human beings and the fans, and fans have loved Trish Stratus for generations. So for them to get the ability to see her, like they had the ability to see Lita last year, I'm mm-hmm. all for it. 100%. It's going to be a banger of a match. Probably be short, like maybe 5-10 minutes tops because, you know, they have to have give Roman his 30-minute entrance. Um, can they just put him on a fucking camel? For fuck's sake. And just just have him drag him down. Like, just somebody start whipping the camel. Don't move, move, motherfucker. Move. God damn it, move. Or someone give him a rabid, a rabid camel. Something. Give it to <laughs> <laughs> or one that bites him or something and bites his leg as he's going to <laughs> something. Jesus Christ. No, he, knowing like, Roman, he'll have the he'll have the camel putting the one up somehow, putting the hoof up for him. Only would camel. only he would. Only he would. Poor camel. Uh all right, I'll keep I'll keep it short and sweet. Becky for the win. Please and thank you. Exactly. Kayla. Definitely. As much as you know, it's great, you know, seeing our Hall of Famers, and I do agree with Trish, you know, it's what it wouldn't honestly be for the women division if it wasn't honestly for her, Lita, and others that started it. Um, and the fact that we actually get to see Trish go one on one with, you know, obviously one of the best female wrestlers in history today, Becky Lynch. So, but sorry, Trish. Um, no, you kind of did a little too far. When you brought Rue into this. So, um, yeah, Miss Becky Lynch, the man's going to take out some satisfaction. Most definitely. (laughs) Don't bring up the kids. Don't bring up the kids. Oh, no. Don't fucking bring up the kids. (laughs) Sheesh. All right. So, the other three matches, I'm just going to run through them real quick, and then I'll let you ladies fly and everything. So, we have Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar, part two. There should have been a stipulation made on this one. Why there wasn't, I have no fucking clue. Uh, Gunther defending the Intercontinental Championship against Mustafa Ali. And then we have Bianca Belair defending the Raw Women's Championship, which should be renamed eventually, um, against Asuka. All right. Kayla. The ones that listen, they know I'm not a huge fan of Bianca Belair. As much as I want Bianca to lose, I don't see her losing right now. As much as Asuka really needs this win because she lost... Her last title match. But then again, the Chili Pepper Mist has been phenomenal. So if she gets that Chili Pepper Mist in, she has a chance against Bianca to put the upper hand up on her. But unfortunately, I think Bianca's going to retain a little bit longer. Okay. Um, short and sweet to the point. Sorry, Ali. I'm glad you're on a winning streak. You deserve it. But sorry, uh, Gunter is going to retain. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Just don't see you coming out. As champion, hey, things could happen, but I'm going with you. <laughs> um, Cody Rose versus Brock. Um, I'm going with the Mr. American Nightmare. Um, most definitely, because Brock, buddy, quit being a sore loser. I'm sorry he beat you once. He's probably going to beat you twice. And trying to choke him out is not going to uh, solve anything. He's just going to angry him. <laughs> so instead of a calm, cool, collect American Nightmare just going to have an angry American Nightmare. So, yeah, Cody's got the one on that one. Alright. Uh, Jolie? Uh, I'm going to start with Bian- Bianca and Asuka. I think it's time for Bianca to be dethroned. Um, I am a fan of Bianca, and I just feel that right now. Somebody said that Rhea's uh, reign has been stale. Number one, fuck you. 
Um, Bianca's has gone stale. I think if you get Asuka to win the title, you're going to have amazing matches. Bailey Asuka, EO Asuka. There's so many more matches. Bianca has beaten everybody, and I think it's time for Asuka to retain, or to not retain, to regain the title. So my pick Mm -hmm. is Asuka. Okay. I actually think that, um, well, in biblical sense, uh, David will slay Goliath and win the Intercontinental title. Um, I mean, this is historically, uh, it's an amazing match, and I'm glad that uh, Ali is going to be featured in this match, in this card. I'm so happy and, you know, I've seen people drag him and say shit, and he is just trolling people back left and right. And you know what? He gets to perform and do what he loves. And if he wins a title, that's great. If he gets chopped in half, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, again, this is going to be an amazing match because we've seen cruiser weights go against Gunther. And how amazing those matches have been. So, this is going to be, to quote Seamus, a banger. Okay. Brock. Brock. To quote TikTok, there's the door, bitch. There's the door. We don't need you anymore. You don't need to be involved with Cody. You don't need to be involved in any storylines for the championship we you don't need any of that you have done everything and anything you are the bar i don't care that you haven't held the title as long as as roman reigns you are still the better champion in my opinion because at least even though you took time off you came back and defended that title almost every pay-per-view you aren't a baby back bitch in that regard however cody Never says die. He's like a goonie in that aspect. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Agreed. (laughs) So, Brock, you're going to literally have to kill him, and he's never going to die, so therefore you are screwed. It's not going to be the American Nightmare. It's going to be Brock's Nightmare. Cody Roan beats you again. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, my God. All right, uh, let's see. Cody for Cody for the win. Brock needs to go. Quit, uh, take take the belly aching somewhere else. Um, Asuka is long overdue. She should have won at WrestleMania. And there's rumor. There was rumor. There's rumors and stories about Bianca turning heel. Anyway, this could be the perfect catalyst for it. Asuka wins. Bianca turns heel. Have a nice day. And I still want my. Ow. Sorry, I just hit my knee by accident. You still want your owl. Okay, we got it. We'll get you one. Don't worry. When <laughs> I see you, your shoulder's going to be owl. My shoulder? <laughs> yeah, we got to give you birthday punches for all the birthdays we've missed. Hey, don't do that shit just because of the oldest, okay? Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, well, you mean we're about to catch up, then we'll have to catch up with Joel. Oh, Lord. Okay, dang. Then I'll be next. <laughs> yeah. All right, um... Uh, Okay, so, yeah, and I still want my EO versus Asuka match at SummerSlam. I'm holding out hope for that. All right. Um, okay, Intercontinental Championship match. Okay. Uh, those who keep saying that Ali doesn't deserve this because he's been jobbing for so long, screw y'all. He has been screwed over for so long. This man deserved to capture the Cruiserweight title when it was still in existence. He has been fucked over after championship match, after championship match, after championship match, okay? And don't get me started with the WWE title picture. That'll take me that'll, that'll take me another five minutes that we do not have, okay? Yes, he's going against Gunther. It is David versus Goliath, as Jolie has stated, okay? If they wanted to if they want to take a perfect opportunity to put Gunther in the main title picture, this would be it. Give the Intercontinental t- title to Ali and let Gunther start going after the World Heavyweight Championship, okay? And yes, Gunther beat Drew. Gunther beat Sheamus and everything. And y'all think that some think this will it'll be a waste for them to put on Ali? No. Okay? 
sit down, take several seats, shut the fuck up. So I'm going with the dark horse here. I'm praying for I'm praying for Mustafa Ali to take it home. If he doesn't, I'm glad he's on the card and he's been doing a phenomenal job lately. So there. All right. Don't forget, <sighs> Ilya Dragunov beat Gunther. It can Thank be you. done. It, yes, it's possible. It is absolutely possible. Kayla, you're on mute. But he is a sicko badass, though. And he's been proven that. <laughs> yes, yes. Ilya is, is very damaged in the head, as we see by the most likely last man standing match between him and Dijak. <laughs> but Buddy Murphy versus Mustafa Ali Wait, was that Buddy? No. I'm sorry. Cedric and Mustafa Ali mm -hmm. was fucking phenomenal. And yeah, you can chop somebody, but you could also get that chop jumped over like a hurdle. And we've Ricochet, seen Ali... Oh, sorry. Ricochet's almost beat him too. So it mm -hmm. is possible. And the hell, but, you saw you saw Ali going against Orton and countered the RKO. Yes. Don't underestimate. Oh gosh, don't underestimate the little guys. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Right there. All right. Night of, cha Night of champions done. Double or nothing. I have no idea about how big the card is. So. Hey. It's your turn, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, while, while she's pulling that up, I do want to say something. I actually am very intrigued if Bianca does turn heel and the Street Profits turn heel with her because, again, me being the faction whore that I am, that'll be a very fun faction to go against LWO as well. Ooh. And like also, um, Dominic Mysterio, you are a bitch. You can't win a match by yourself. Just saying. And I know that happened because I was watching clips on TikTok and um yeah, you're a bitch. That's know, all that's so, that's so ridiculous. I'm so sick of his ass getting these cheap ass wins. Okay. All right, right now there's been nine matches made for double or nothing. I don't right. know. I don't think they're gonna make any more, um okay. unless they do on Wednesday, but right now they have nine. Um, this one has been building up for a while. It is an unsanctioned match. Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho. And I'll go ahead and um, say Adam Cole, baby. Pat? Yeah, I actually, I, I haven't watched a whole lot of that a AEW All Access and everything, but I watched the finale when um, Cole came back. Because that one intrigued me a little bit. And I've seen, like, I've been mainly catching up with AEW online and everything. Yeah, Adam Cole for sure. Fuck Jericho. Bye. Jester. <laughs> Chris Jericho, you can suck several dicks. Fuck off. Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> this next one has been a little creepy. Well, not creepy, but crazy how it came about. Um, Six-man tag team, Ethan Page and the Guns versus the Hardy Party, which is Isaiah Cassidy, Jeff Hardy, and Matt Hardy. Um, they've already had their deletion match at the compound, Hardy Compound, and rest in peace, Matt Hardy's mailbox that did not see the next day. Um, Kat, who do you think is coming out with that one? <laughs> uh, part of me was, I, I hate I don't want a rubber match. I don't want, I don't want a rubber match. No, I don't want to rub a match. Uh, Hardy side for sure, because it's like, yeah, because it's like part of it was like saying, yeah, they got the win at Hardy count Compound when, especially when uh, the wifey and the son had to get involved. I saw, I saw that damn clip. Um, but I was like, so it's like Ethan Page and the Guns could possibly get a win, and there'd be a rubber match down the line. But I was like, going, eh, fuck the Guns. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Hardy and Hardy Party. Hardy Party. Jolly. Party party, fuck the guns. Party party, definitely. Um, I was excited when the guns lost the titles. That was like the most exciting thing of my life. Uh, next one. AEW TBS Championship. Jade Cargill versus Taya Vickery, part two. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, can I jump in first? Go ahead. For the love of God, 
and the for the sake of our sanity, please let Jade retain so we can get a surprise return from Stat. And the next pay-per-view, Stat can take the title off Jade. Because I swear to God, Tony Khan, if if Ty ends up getting the title, we're not, Jolie and I are not going to be able to contain Kayla. Because she's going to go off. We're going to have to get our ears checked. And we're going to have to send her some fucking Valium. Fuck that, Xanax. <laughs> but I'll say this right now. Tony Khan. Bitch, I ain't stopping her. She will come for you. We'll get the bail money. We'll get a GoFundMe started. She's you the fuck. closest to Jacksonville. <laughs> so, so I'm guessing we're all saying Jade, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why yeah. part of me with it being double or nothing, um, I'm guess I'm kind of hoping that she, after she retains, she holds it. And I, I, just the moment that Carter I starts just i'm waiting for that i'm waiting for her to come back this next one has been building up and building up for weeks and i called it way ahead just to know just how it's been going it is an anarchy in the arena match blackpool combat club versus the elite and i'm gonna be honest with you i'm torn between both sides on this because I like the Blackpool Combat Club. I love John Moxley. The fact that him and Claudio and Brian is working together, I can really care less about Wheeler Utah. He's just there as a little weasel that follows them around. Um, I'm torn between both of them because um, obviously, uh, you know, they may irritate me sometimes, but I'm a fan of, you know, Young Bucks and Omega. And obviously, I'm a fan of Hangman. Um, just because of the combat, Blackpool Combat Club has been ransacking all over. I believe that Elite's actually going to get the win over the Blackpool Combat Club. Cat, I'm torn as well because it's like it's nice that Paige reunited with the Elite because it's been a long time coming and mm-hmm. everything. But it's like I'm more, I've been more favoring towards the Blackpool Combat Club because it's like again, Mox, Danielson, or Claudio, mm-hmm. and all that and everything. Uh, despite the elite having like the momentum going into this and everything, uh, this might be a long shot. I don't care, but BCC for me. Okay, right. Jolie. Sorry, fuck you, Daniel Bryan. Fuck you, Claudio. Fuck you, Mox. Fuck you, Yuta. I am actually going for the uh, annoying boys of Omega. Um, and the Young Bucks and Hangman Page. I can't stand the bullshit that they're pulling on right now. I think it's annoying. Uh, Daniel Bryan as this little uh, mastermind little bitch genius is pissing me the fuck off. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's probably one of the worst acting I have ever seen. Uh, Claudio is better than what he is and he's stuck in a shit thing where he should be actually going for a main title not an ROH uh, participation award. Um, because that's all the ROH titles are is participation awards because that company doesn't fucking exist anymore. It's just something to make people feel nostalgic. He should be going for the AEW title or the uh the other the TBS title. Is it, are they the TBS title? The TNT, 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 the TNT title. He should be going for that or the North American, not you know, not the Intercontinental title ripoff that you know they have title. You know, he should be going for something that's for the company of AEW and let ROH guys go for ROH things. Right now, he's, it's, I think it's bullshit that Claudio is fucked the way that he is. Uh, the the uh, Blackpool Bullet Club ripoff needs to get its ass beat. And, um, you know, yeah, they're just giant piles of dog shit. And I just want them to get their shit kicked in. And people are like, well, you don't watch AEW. No, I watch I watch clips. You guys don't understand. I do watch clips. I just see there's some of the biggest piles of shit walking around. And um, the over-under of Moxley bleeding within is uh, less than 30 seconds right now. And I'm very shocked you went that route because you're not the biggest Omega fan. I'm not the biggest Bucks for Omega fan, but you know what? Um, Somebody needs to shut down the Blackpool Combat Club. That's all I got to say. That and... I just feel that them running rough shot and all but Yuta not being ex WWE guys 
and the elite having going through the bullshit that they are going through with fucking CM Punk and Ace Bitch Steel, you know, I think that they deserve a fucking win. And, you know, yes, it's shocking that I am pulling for the young fucks and Kenny Noodlehead. But I like Hangman, so. There you go. (laughs) And technically the only one that I like out of the Blackpool is Claudio, so. I I just can't. No, nah, I, I can't root for those guys anymore because, to me, it's uh, it's a, basically it's WWE versus AEW. That's all that is right there, minus one guy. Yeah. All right. Next one: AEW Women's World Championship. Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm. Jamie better retain. That's all I gotta say. I have a feeling that uh. Unfortunately, I have a gut feeling that Tony's going to get it because Soraya's going to get involved. And so is Ruby. Well, Jamie's also got Brick and Sheeta. So we still be... When's Wembley? August? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, I could see... And I think that's why I'm getting the gut feeling. It's like Tony wins that and then since Jamie is English she's from England she gets to have that big win over there reclaiming the title oh yeah and outcasts are pissing me off Out, yeah it, I haven't watched a lot of AEW recently and everything I've just been kept keeping up online but outcasts are pissing me the fuck off well, see, Jamie, the funny- Jamie, to, yeah. Jamie to retain but see the funny thing is about the outcast what was the one thing that Soraya or Paige bitched about in WWE? The spray paint with L's and the losers. What is she doing in AEW? She's doing same the shit. losers. She's exactly. doing the same shit. Exactly. Um, this dude already has a title match on AEW Dynamite against, is his name Kevin Fletcher, I think? What's his name? Something Fletcher from uh, Aussie Open. Cannot think what his name is. Top of my head. Um, sorry, dude, if I killed your name. I don't remember your name. I don't really like you, so that's why I'm not saying you're Fletcher. Um, however, I'm pretty sure he'll come out on top. But at Double or Nothing, it's a 21 man blackjack battle royal for the AEW International Championship. So basically, Orange Cassidy versus Aaron Solo, Powerhouse Hobbs, QT Marshall, and 17 other competitors. Who's coming out as champion? And I hate to say it, I think he'll wedge his way out. He'll pull an awesome theory. I think Orange Cassidy's coming out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give it to Orange Cassidy. I'll, I'll give it to Orange. I'll, I'll give it to OC. <laughs> Jolay? See, 17 other guys versus Orange Cassidy. So basically the entire men's locker room. Uh, Yeah, for some reason, I think that little snake in the grass is going to be able to fucking put his hands in his pocket and slink out of there like a little bitch, too. Sorry, I can't stand him. I cannot stand Orange Cassidy. I think that's some of the worst gimmick wrestling in the fucking world. Um, Yeah, nah, dude. That the whole that that's just trash. I'm sorry. That's just fucking. I know, Mama Larissa. I know you love him, but I'm sorry. It's fucking trash. It is. Uh, ladder match for the AEW TNT Championship. Wardlow with Arn Anderson versus Christian Cage with Luchasaurus. Wardlow better fucking win. Please. Right? Please. <laughs> oh my God! Please, no. Christian does not uh Christian this this Christian with a title? Fuck that. Luchasaurus deserves a title before he does. Exactly. That's exactly. why part of me, that's why a part of me kind of rooting for Luchasaurus to turn on Christian's book. Uh <laughs> this next one is tag team champ AEW World Tag Team Championship with Mark Briscoe as the special guest referee. FTR will defend against Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. Oh, God. FTR better freaking win. Do we even have to discuss <clears> this? 
Uh oh. Uh oh, Jester. <laughs> Mark. Hi, Chicken Man. Hello. I know where you live. Well, I don't know exactly where you live. I know the vicinity of where you live. If somehow Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, and I'm a giant whore Karen Jarrett walks out with those tag team titles, I'm coming for you, Chicken Man. We're going to have a barbecue. For fuck's sake, FTR needs to fucking retain. I think our gesture covered for all three of us. Jesus fucking Christ. Why why in the fucking hell is Jeff fucking Jarrett getting a title shot at anything? The only title shots he should be getting are fucking vaccines and in the nursing home. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, there will be no mercy, Tony, if fucking Jeff Jarrett and Jay... I've been accused of rape, lethal, win the titles. Sorry. Yeah. I have not. Do us, I a, used do, to, do us a solid. <laughs> I used to be a fan of Jay Lethal. I loved his shtick with him and Flair back in TNA days. But when those stories came out about him, I believed the women. Yeah. Because there was more than one. So. <sighs> All right. Next. All right. Our main event at Double or Nothing. Is this where your shockers want to come in at? Okay, okay. All right. AEW World Championship. It's MJF versus Sammy Guevara versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry versus Darby Allen. Darby Allen and Jungle Boy are two of my faves over in AEW. Not a huge fan of MJF. I mean, he is one of the biggest heels. Yes, I do like him for being a heel, but I don't mean nothing. But... As far as Sammy Guevara, oh, he will not be one of my favorites. Never will be. But I agree with Sammy Guevara for what he said on Dynamite. Because he looked at Darby and says, I don't care if it's me, you, or Jungle Boy. One of us has to take that titles off of that prick. Talking about MJF. Okay. Um, then the fact, this is what's going to shock you. As a pro wrestler, not a person, after Wednesday, Sammy's got my respect because with he came out to save Jungle Boy and Darby from getting mauled to death from other people in the ring on Wednesday. He didn't have to do that. In fact, came out and saved them, and it was those three in the ring. Um, at this point, as much as I would love Darby and Jungle Boy to win, at this point, I would take Sammy Guevara over MJF because MJF needs to lose the title. He's gotten a little too cocky. Um, But I don't know why I have this feeling, but uh, I think MJF's going to retain. I'll be surprised if someone takes it off of me. Cat? I, I hate <laughs> you and your feelings. I really hate when you get those feelings. It really irritates the shit out of me. How does that feel? <laughs> Oh, that title needs some new blood. That title needs some new blood. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go with the dark. I'm gonna go with the dark horse here, probably. But Mr. Perry for the win. Jolet. I don't see them taking the title off of MJF because Tony Khan needs to really kiss that man's ass to keep him staying in his company because he has, he has stated multiple times his contract is up at the beginning of next year and he's already having multiple offers. And I would honestly love to see MJF in WWE. So if Tony Khan wants to keep MJF in AEW, he better lick his ball sack and keep him champion. I'm upset. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, that's it, Kayla? That was that's it. it. That was the main event. Wow. that That's a crazy card. Yeah, they don't need to add anything else. That That card's stacked enough as it is. All right, so I know predictions have taken up a lot of the show already, but there's some lists that came out this week that I needed to get y'all's opinions on. And this first one is kind of a crazy one. WWE released their top 25 greatest debuts of all time. Now, this is main roster debuts, Raw, SmackDown, stuff like that. I was going through this list, 
and I'm just going to read them 25, number 25 to 20 to one. Um, and then I'm going to, usually I love you to, I, I give you to the floor first to spill your grievances and everything, but there's one big omission off this that I'm going to take care of first, but let me read the list. All right. So number 25, Solo Sokoa. Number 24, Santino Morella. 23, Shinsuke Nakamura. 22, Usos and Tamina. 21, Baron Corbin, because he won the Battle Royal as a member of NXT. So technically that was his debut. 20, Umaga. 19, Rey Mysterio. 18, The Nexus. 17, Asuka. 16, Carlito. 15, Great Khali. 14, Braun Strowman. 13, Sting. Uh, 12, The Undertaker, 11, Booker T, 10, Chris Jericho, 9, John Cena, 8, KO, 7, The Rock, 6, AJ Styles, 5, Brock Lesnar, 4, Ronda Rousey, 3, Goldberg, 2, Kane, and 1, The Shield. Okay, let me get this out of the way before I let you two lose. I don't give a damn. If one of these women is not with a company anymore. July 13th, 2015 was a pivotal moment for the women's division. How in the fuck's sake is the debuts of Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Sasha not on this list? That is the biggest fuck up ever. It was a pivotal moment. Like I said, it was a pivotal moment for the women's division. And those three, when they debuted on the main roster... Everything changed. So that was the biggest fucking omission from this list ever. Yeah, there and Ronda Rousey in the top five, give me a break. But yeah, that omission is pissed me the hell off when I saw this list. That omission <sighs> was okay, Paige on it? Paige won the that's fucking a, that's, title. That's another one. That is a fucking another one. Oh my god. All right, all right, all right, totally go. You, you don't have Paige on there, who is a very pivotal role in the women's evolution revolution. AJ Lee, you, you you bypass the women and you put fucking Ronda Rousey. Yes, you have Asuka. 100% respect to Asuka. But her main event debut kind of fell flat. You want to talk about debuts? Sasha, Becky. Charlotte above fucking Ronda Rousey. I'll agree with the men. You know, I actually know why the fuck is Santino Morella on there? The Hardy Boys should be on there. Edgy Christian should be on there. Uh, but yeah, no, bypassing the women, y'all fucked up. China? How the fuck do you leave China? DX off of that. I mean, I mean, but not, but China of all fucking people. Mm-hmm. Go fuck yourself for leaving the women off of that. Yeah. Some people had some issues with the list because it's like some like people are like saying like Jericho's was too low, and um, I think I think uh, Barrett had an issue with the uh, Nexus being down at eighteen. I actually agree that one should have been a bit higher. But uh, Kayla, other than having the female not having the females on here that we mentioned, you guys mentioned, um, I would honestly drop Santino Morella and put Cross and Scarlet in there for the NXT debut because no one really saw it coming until they attacked Ciampa backstage. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this list is kind of... And why is Goldberg on there? Come on now. I don't know. It's just there's a lot of missing. And this was specifically through, what, WWE? This is WWE's list for main roster debuts. Bullshit. You know, you know what, ladies? Homework for next next week. We'll, we'll do our favorite WWE debuts. There we main go. Roster de- main roster main, debuts? It can be main roster debuts. And like I said, I put Cross and Scarlet in there for the NXT as far as debut. So it can be kind of how they brought them in kind of debuts. Let's we'll do it that way. WWE okay. debut. Okay. WWE debuts. It could be NXT or main roster. Top 10? I- do t- I'm going to say top 10. If you want to do more, do more. It's up to you. Um, okay. And the reason I say NXT is because Cross's first 
debut on main roster was screwed over. Thank you, Vince McMahon. His second one coming back in my hometown on SmackDown will probably be... uh, You know what? We'll discuss the list. I can go on and on. (laughs) (laughs) Homework for this week. However... I'll do 10, but however many you want. If you, like Jolie did with the theme songs, we, she had close to 100, I think. So right. you have close to 100, Lord help us all. And she just flipped me off. But I love you, Jolie. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay. Let me get that list out of the way. All right. Now, let's see. Sportskedia. Are y'all familiar with chat GPD? G- GPT? I have no idea. I okay. Who they are. I don't know either, but um, Sportskedia put out a couple of lists. According to Chat GPT, they put out a top ten best wrestlers of all time, and then a top female, top ten female wrestlers of all time. So I'm going to go to the best wrestlers one first. All right, so their top ten best wrestlers of all time: ten, you have Triple H, nine, Undertaker. Eight, Bret Hart. Seven, Andre the Giant. Six, Shawn Michaels. Five, John Cena. Four, Ric Flair. Three, The Rock. Two, Stone Cold. And number one, Hulk. Hulk Hogan. Kayla? In a way, I can agree with it, but I would replace Hulk Hogan with Randy Orton. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. Um, But other than that, you know... In his prime, Ric Flair was on there. You know, Rock, obviously. You know, HBK, Andre the Giant was, you know, totally amazing um, in the ring. Um, You know, obviously, Hitman, the Bret Hart was Undertaker. Obviously, is always going to be the Undertaker. Perfect, you know, Triple H. But like I said, um, if I had to choose, like, I'd take uh, Hulk Hogan off of Orton right there. All right. Jolie? Greatest wrestlers of all time. Uh, let's see. Uh, I kind of have to agree with all this because, despite Hulk being Hulk, he is a generational talent. Uh, the only one I might take off, and it hurts me to say this, is take Andre the Giant off for Randy Orton. Okay, but that's it. I'll do. I'll do that one, and then um. I got to move Hulk down the list a little bit. Probably put like Stone Cold, The Rock, Flair, Cena, and then I'll put Hulk at five. Yeah, I, that Hulk is too high for me. And then, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll, I agree with like taking Andre off and putting Randy right there. All right. Top 10 female wrestlers of all time. All right. So we got 10 Natalia. Nine, Charlotte Flair. Eight, Mae Young. Seven, Becky Lynch. Six, Lita. Five, Alundra Blaze. Four, China. Three, Mercedes Monet. Two, Fabulous Moolah. And one, Trish Stratus. Jolie? As much as it hates me to do this, I take off Natalia for Paige. Leaving her off this list is kind of ridiculous. I love Natalia. Don't get me wrong. I think she's amazing, but if it's just leaving somebody like Paige out who had the debate, the debate, the debut, the debut, the debut that she had uh, is kind of like a, a giant fuck you, in my opinion. And also with the tarnished of Mula, I would drop her down to ten, and probably move everybody up one, and then put. Um, page at number nine. Kayla? Um, the only issue I had with it, I actually replaced Mercedes Monet and had a page there. Okay. And I can't replace Natalia because, like I said, if it wasn't for Natalia, I wouldn't like woman wrestling. So I'm sorry, I can't replace my natty. Okay. okay. And I ain't got nothing against Mercedes or Sasha Banks. I'm just, if I honestly oh, I had have- to choose one somebody there, I had to replace somebody and well no actually I'll keep Mercedes. Let's replace Fabulous Moolah with Paige. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so 
sorry. No, no, no. It's a preference thing. It's a preference thing. I totally get it. No worries. No worries at all. All right. Uh, Mula get, okay. Mula's got to get dropped down. Yeah. I mean, the list is pretty solid and everything. If, if I had to take off anybody, it would be Alundra or Natalia. Um, put Paige and you can, you can also make a case for AJ Lee as well to put her on the top 10 as well. So, I mean, some of these lists have been, haven't been bad and everything. It's just the orders have been screwed up and sometimes the orders are everything. Lord have mercy. All right. Kayla, do you have any tweets? Yeah, I'm mute. I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to have one that actually is probably going to ruffle the feathers of our jester. Oh, shit. (laughs) This one is actually a tweet that no DQ put out, and they're asking for ratings in the comments that were saying, let me say all the comments before our jester goes off, but this is going to ruffle her feathers because it ruffled my feathers. No DQ said, rate Pretty Deadly's entrance on a scale of 1 to 10. People going, oh, it's funny. It reminds me of John Morrison and just different things, you know. Then someone goes, what is this? Another trans tag team? Um, I'm sending a friend over, isn't it? What the fuck is this? Why, whenever a wrestler or a team that acts gay is suddenly popular to the to the moon? And then they say, just a couple of faggots trying to get a wrestling name. Touching that one with a 10 foot pole. Fuck that. Uh-huh, right? That's <laughs> Okay. Couple of faggots. Hi to whoever said that. Yeah. Those faggots, if they are even gay, which I don't think they are, can kick your ass. And you know what? Fuck you. This is the type of hate that we have to deal with on a daily basis. I wish someone would say, oh, look, there's that fucking hetero bitch. Stop shoving your heterosexuality down my throat. We don't need to see that fucking shit. Oh, God, who wants to see you and your wife make out or you and your girlfriend or you and your boyfriend? I don't know if you're a man or a woman who fucking even said it. It doesn't fucking matter. Y'all want to state that you're good fucking people, yet you put out that bullshit. You know what? Here's an idea. If that's how you feel about people that are gay, move to Poland, move to uh, uh, Russia, for fuck's sake. They, they hate gays as much as you do. Go live with them and fuck off away from us. Because you know who is gay and who could kick your ass? Sonia Deville. Nyla Rose. Fred uh, Fred Rosser, right? Yeah. That's his name. They can all kick your ass. And maybe, just maybe, with those hateful comments, you secretly want them to fuck you. Is that it? Is your your external homophobia because you've got internal homophobia? Because deep down, when you look at a woman... And and you got to quickly think, is that a man or a woman? And if it is, was a man, does that mean I'm gay? Oh, sweetie. Everybody's a little bit gay. We're the only ones that exude hate about it. So, kindly, fuck off. My, okay, my, 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 my friends are getting killed. And getting beat up. And states like Florida are taking children away from their parents. Kidnapping them. Legally. Where they want trans men who were biological women who look like men to go in the women's room. Because that's what they were assigned. And they want trans women who were once men who look like women to go in the men's room. This is just going to breed hate and violence. And, you know, I said something to somebody about, I'm terrified to go to events. And they said, well, get a gun. That's not going to solve a fucking thing. 
your hate is fixable. A bullet in the brain isn't. I'd rather talk shit out, work shit out, figure out what the root of the hate is or the misinformation is. Because guess what? Using words like faggot and transgender and, and all this, all that, he's a man, just stems more hate and more violence. And somebody innocent is going to get killed because of ignorance. So think before you fucking speak. Because I've dealt with violence before. I don't like dealing with violence. I don't like being violent. I hate being violent. I'm actually a pacifist by nature. I would rather work things out with words. But this hatred, it's already tearing this country apart. And if we thought that Pulse and Las Vegas and our war were bad, one of you sick fucks is going to do worse. Because you're afraid of quote-unquote grooming? How about you go after the real groomers? The Catholic fucking church. How about you go after the Boy Scout leaders? The teachers, men and women, who are fucking straight. Next time you call somebody a faggot, look in the mirror because you're probably one your fucking self. You just don't want to admit it. Now I'm done. My apologies. <laughs> um, this next one, I don't agree with two parts of it, but the third part kind of made put a smile on my face and you'll see why the original tweet was from 8jg424 what is with triple h's obsession with cross and not people like gargano knight eo or dakota person retweeted back and at carrie and rousey said this is the these these first two is not what i agree with i don't agree with this but the last part i do i made me smile Okay. Johnny Jobber has no charisma, no character, can't talk in his ant size. Dakota Kai has no personality, no charisma, can't talk, part of a faction that killed Raw. Those two I don't agree with. This last one is what Cross has charisma, has a character, great promo, looks like a star. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't I don't agree with him saying Johnny's a jobber and Dakota. The Dakota part, most definitely not. But. Yeah, that was a that was a little like out there. I, like, I saw huh. the cross part, and I was like, "Oh, somebody actually taking up for him and not bashing him." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jeez Louise, jeez. <sighs> That's all I have. I don't have no more to ruffle feathers. Okay, this this only other one I kept and everything. So at Live for Bianca said the jobbers of NXT. These two suck. So overhyped. And so overhyped and overrated, couldn't cut a promo or wrestle to save their life. Move along, and the picture, the two that they have pictured are Carmelo Hayes and Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany, I agree with Carmelo. No, same. Look, they just don't understand talent. Exactly. Oh my gosh! And then it's like this jackass. Hold on. I didn't say this one. I, 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 I wasn't going to originally bring this up, but this guy caused a lot of turmoil yesterday. And I got to fucking find the original tweet, too. Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. So at, remember how we talked before? Kayla, remember that seven wrestlers thing? You said the one that uh, you asked us, the one we would, the wrestler we would fight for and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. I almost went to blows yesterday. At, at Global Flight, at Global Fight Rev, put a tweet up with a before and after picture of Walter and said, this is what Keith Lee refused to do and now has become an afterthought. Gunther um, is the ultimate role is the ultimate model of what you have to do to become a star. He worked for it. He has earned it. Um, douche. While I disagree, I mean, like, while I think that he shouldn't have said that about Keith Lee, I mean, in all honesty, not knocking Lee, but what they did with Gunther is what WWE is 
trying to push. Uh, I mean, but again, with Keith's health issues, there's nothing he could have done at that time before they let him go. Mm-hmm. But I can slightly see what he is saying, but disagree with it at the same time. And the only reason he's even Gunther's getting this push is because of Triple H, because Vince wanted to push him back. Vince wanted to push him to the side and everything. And but yeah, I saw that and I was like going, Keith Lee almost died. And you're you're attacking this man. And he could and it, it's like I don't know who runs this damn twi- Twitter uh account and everything, but Keith Lee can do amazing things at his size. It doesn't fucking matter. But, and I But I do it, agree with the fact that he's not being utilized properly in AEW. Well, I mean, I I mean, I I, I he got Roy Lee. He was fine in NXT and he really got screwed over when he went to the main roster and pushed out the door and just I, I I'm 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 still kind of upset about the fact that he's not still with that WWE and everything, but yeah, this tweet hit me like all kinds of wrong yesterday. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Whew. I know y'all missed us because this is a long ass episode for us to catch up on. So ah. Kayla, any final thoughts? Other than Jade Cargill, kick some Tyler Valkyrie ass, please. Thank you. <laughs> Jolie? Nope. I said all I gotta say. Yeah. I think I think we all did. All right. That's all we have for this episode of the Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next time as the takeover continues. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>